And there, this group was also tied in with uh, a man called uh, Roy Radin, who was a billionaire or millionaire East Coaster, lived on Rhode Island, who commissioned the Son of Sam Killings. This was the millionaire behind it. It was a guy called Ro Roy Radin, and he was a filmmaker, a would-be filmmaker. He actually was involved in making the movie The Cotton Club and, and others. And he himself was murdered later on in California. Um, I think it wasn't far from Laurel Canyon. I'm not exactly sure of the location. But Ted Gunderson, you see, was called in as the FBI expert to study the scene. And the scene was a ritual scene with a Bible opened at a certain page and various other ritual elements. And so he was able to help me confirm this. And I also must say, you know, was able to lend information also from researchers I'd done as to what the symbolism, uh, you know, signified. And just to make a point that uh, Roy Radin and his very wealthy cronies, many of them who were political figures, many involved in the police, many of them involved in the media, were commissioning the Son of Sam killings as snuff films, by the way. That's what they were. They were live snuff films. The murders actually took place and were being filmed. And a white van was seen at every single one of the killings. This is what the media suppressed. And in that van were people filming these atrocities so that then this creature could sit in his mansions in Rhode Island and watch them. And so he commissioned this little poxy nothing group from Yonkers to go around and do these killings for that pretext, as is happening all over the world and has been for a long, long time. Of course, we know that Polanski himself is not squeaky clean. He was accused of child rape and, and he ran and lived most of his life in exile. The real killers, the ones who really did the killings up there on Cielo Drive, actually uh, they know who they were now. They're all themselves been murdered by their own gang. They all fell foul of their own people. But uh, when they were alive, they actually stayed in the house of this woman, who is known, uh, who is uh, Mama Cass Elliot from the Mamas and the Papas, who was a lifelong Satanist and occultist and, and drug fiend. And she housed her place was a hangout for bikers, and she lived basically down the street from Cielo Drive. That's where the drug money was collected. Of course, where you have Polanski, you have Sharon Tate, the film director and the blonde actress. Why? Because he made a movie, The Eye of the Devil, which is loaded with exactly the symbolism we're talking about. It was a movie of occult ritual from beginning to end. Eye of the Devil. Filled with astrological, all sorts of weird, spooky, crazy, mind control based uh, symbolism. seeking or am I being sought do the people here think that you're some kind of a magician a, a god Catherine you shouldn't have come here Dean, what was that ceremony up there in the, in the tower the people of Belenac are deeply rooted in the past their traditions of worship are ancient some of these traditions may seem Strange to an outsider. This is no place for a woman. It never has been. I assure you, it's quite harmless. I'm sorry, darling, but I don't believe that. Believe it, Catherine. Believe it. Or leave here. Catherine. Oh, dear. Help me. I am helping you, Catherine. Just. Just a few more steps. Oh, Poor Philippe. You're mad. I told you to frighten her, not to kill her. Catherine. I believe you're up against something very strange, very dark here. You don't seem to need me anymore. Of course I need you. I just want you to leave here. You must be mad. You must all be mad. All of you.
In fact, Tate was initiated, Sharon Tate was initiated while she was filming with Polanski in London. She was visited by the head uh, sorcerer of the time, the head of the witch, the witches at the time, Alex Saunders. And one, you, you would want to ask, the very presence of, of people like this around, these filmmakers and actresses and actors, is already, you'd wonder what was going on. In fact, uh, Tony Iommi, Anthony Iommi from the band Black Sabbath, said that they'd play their concerts and this guy would turn up at their, com at their concerts trying to convert them all. And they wanted nothing to do with it. But they talked about this guy and his gang coming around. And uh, see, these groups nowadays may not, you know, you may be saying, okay, they're, they're calling themselves the Jesus movement, they're calling themselves Scientology, they're calling themselves evangelism. But you see, what's behind that? Now, when you see these guys shaking hands with the, the famous celebrities, Maury Terry goes on to say, I surfaced new evidence connecting Manson to the process. I reviewed a letter Manson wrote in 1989. In his own hand, he described another occasion where he met named process leaders. Incredibly, he said, this gathering actually took place at the Tate home, the scene of future mass slaughter.